What's going on, everybody? Ryan Williams here from FanDuel, back with another Hurry Up, and we're talking about the NFL preseason wide receiver stock up. This is going to be a fun topic here. Let's go through these three receivers that I think you need to be targeting as you get in. We're only a couple weeks from draft days, um, so this is fun. We need, to, we need to get these surefire targets. Let's start off with Allen Robinson from Chicago. He's coming in at wide receiver nine. Now you guys might say, wait, listen, Ryan, what are you talking about? PPR, he was wide receiver nine last year. And that was true. But look at who he was quarterbacked with um, or paired with as a quarterback. He's got Nick Foles, Mitchell Trubisky. Those are the guys that he was with. And, and when you talk about on Robinson, you talk about his days at Jacksonville with Blake Bortles and a slew of guys who just weren't that good. And now we're coming off of a weekend with the Justin Fields preseason hype. Uh, you're watching this, you're already seeing the growing injury, but it, Matt Nagy has already said there's not anything to to write home about. And this guy will be uh, playing, I believe, most of the preseason and pretty much making a case, case for him to be the starter. And I think that it's wheels up for Allen Robinson. If this guy is the starter, you're talking about a guy who was wide receiver six with Blake Bortles and has back-to-back -back seasons now where he's had 150 targets with guys that just aren't of the caliber of a quarterback that we can project that Justin Fields will be. Even if it's Andy Dalton out there, I do think that there's still room for Allen Robinson to pay off this price tag. And that's why I'm comfortable taking him as the first receiver off the board in round two um, and really banking on that, uh, paying off dividends, especially when Fields is going to be named the starter later on in the season. Let's talk about another guy, this guy from Dallas, wide receiver 46, and that's Michael Gallup. Now, Michael Gallup has been a, a crux for some people in the fantasy industry uh, in, after the 2019 season, uh, where he pretty much only, he only had four out of the 15 games that he played in under seven targets that he was receiving there with Dak Prescott. People were thinking that it was wheels up, and then we have the 2020 draft, and they bring in CeeDee Lamb. Now, this is a team in the Dallas Cowboys that run pretty much some of the more wide receiver three sets that we're going to see in the National Football League. Michael Gallup is going to be on the field. And if preseason was any indication of that, this guy ran 60 percent, over 60 percent of his routes in the slot. Just the slot is a very valuable position for the wide receiver. He's going to be on the field, I believe, and it sometimes maybe even rotated out if they can move him in and across the field. Some people might think that the wide receiver 46 price tag might be too high for a guy who's the wide receiver three in this offense. But I think that the Cowboys are going to struggle in some games this year with Dak kind of getting back into full game speed. And I think they'll be down in some games where they're going to need to throw. And so I think we can project Michael Gallup again for another 100 target season. This guy's had two 100 target seasons back to back already, having Amari Cooper there, having CeeDee Lamb there last year, and not even having Dak Prescott um, for 12 out of a 16 game season in 2020. So definitely like Michael Gallup stock as we get into preseason. And then lastly, let's talk about a rookie here, Terrace Marshall Jr., rookie from Carolina. JJ was talking about this guy until the cows came home when we did our NFL draft show, which seems like decades ago now, uh, but only a couple months ago. And this guy kind of was going through OTAs and going through cap, camp. Uh, making splash plays, but not really paying off any dividends. Well, now we had the first preseason game in the books, and this guy's putting up 88 yards on three catches, just making splash plays all over, and saw two red zone targets. And, and red zone was the big thing with Terrace Marshall because he is that big kind of stature guy. He's about three inches taller than DJ Moore, um, heavier than Robbie Anderson. He's going to be a red zone look, and this team struggled last year in the red zone. Granted, that was with Teddy Bridgewater, who's no longer with the team, but the wide receivers only accounted for six red zone touchdowns last year. That's definitely got to get their numbers up. You got Terrace Marshall in Carolina reunited with Joe Brady, who was his offensive court or was his coach at LSU. Now the offensive coordinator there. And you definitely love seeing that um, 18 touchdowns in his last two years at LSU. This guy's going to be a playmaker. He's going to make a difference. And his ADP is just not reflected of that. He was the wide receiver 70 pretty much for the entire month of August until we had the last preseason game on Saturday. And he's already moved up 10 spots to wide receiver 60. So people are are coming to terms with Terrace Marshall making uh, making an impact as a rookie in this year's draft. And I definitely think he's one of the late targets in double digit rounds that you can get him po possibly uh, at this point in time now. But if you, you know, want to buy in on him earlier, you might have to be getting this guy in the seventh or eighth round. And you can feel comfortable with that uh, because Carolina is going to be another team that can struggle and will throw the ball. That's going to do it 
for the hurry up for this week. NFL preseason wide receiver stock up. I'll be back talking about some preseason DFS targets that we can target on week two for the Saturday slate of games. Until then, make sure you guys are subscribed to the YouTube channel and we'll catch you next time. Peace.